Who's your neighbor? What do you really know about them? Who knows, they might just be a spy. Join us today as we ring our neighbor's bell to discover the spy next door. Hi, this is Tom Pizzotto. And Dan Silvestri. Of SpyMovieNavigator.com. Thanks for joining us on our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. As today we look at the fun family spy movie, The Spy Next Door. First, we'd like to give a big shout out to Pierce Brosnan, who on April 19th, through Esquire UK, gave us a video walkthrough presentation of GoldenEye from his home in Hawaii. We watched as he made comments about the movie and answered questions on any of his Bond filming experiences. We enjoyed the walkthrough, Pierce, and really appreciate it. Bravo. Yeah, that was really fun. You think about sitting there for two and a half hours with just the mic there trying to figure out what to say and to comment on. But to hear his stories about how things happened in the past was really fun. So today we're going to look at The Spy Next Door. If you've listened to our previous podcast, this one's going to be a little bit of a diversion what we've done to date. For most of our podcasts, we focus on Bond, Mission Impossible, Best of the Rest, or we've discussed the movie within, the, within days of its U.S. release in what we've called the Quickfire Podcast. Well, today we're going to adapt the Quickfire Podcast with the movie The Spy Next Door. We've decided with the coronavirus stuff going on to look at some lighthearted or maybe lesser known spy movies to broaden everyone's spy movie awareness. So in our quick fires, we don't tend to go into as much depth as we do in some of our other podcasts, but want to give you a taste of some other spy movies that you may not have seen while still talking about their influences with other spy movies in the real world. A bonus on this movie is it's rated PG and written for a family. That said, there's a little bit of fighting because this is a Jackie Chan movie after all. Yeah. Before we get into the story, one thing we should point out is what this isn't. With the name The Spy Next Door, it's not about the real story about the deep cover Russian agents who assimilated themselves into American lives for years living here as real families, waiting to be told to come out and do something. And I only point this out because that was a real, real world thing that happened and if you've seen the Spy Wars with Damian Lewis, it's here in the U.S. It's being shown on Smithsonian Channel. It was in the U.K. I don't know what channel last year. And there was an episode called The Spies Next Door that was on this topic of these, these people assimilating themselves. Or if you saw the FX series The Americans, which is a phenomenal series, it was about that story as well. So I just want to point out that this is about a totally different type of movie. Yeah, this is a fun that, family spy yeah. comedy movie. <laughs> so it's it's not that other thing. So yeah. if you saw the name and said, oh, okay, it, that's not it. Yeah. So, so Dan, why don't you go ahead and give us a little background on the movie itself? Yeah, the movie is a fun movie. I liked it. I've just watched it twice, and Jackie Chan does a great job. It's, it's just entertaining. It's about... This woman, Jillian, who's divorced, she has three children, Farron, the older girl, Ian, the boy, and Nora, the four-year-old. They also have a pet pig, a turtle, and a cat. Her neighbor, Bob Ho, a Chinese man, has been dating Jillian for about three months, and her children do not like him at all. They think he's boring, he's a nerd, he wears glasses and appears to be, in, in fact, a, a little bit boring. <laughs> Jillian and Bob are at dinner, and Bob wants to tell Jillian what his real job is. He is apparently thought to be a pen salesman. In reality. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah he's, I sell pens. Yeah, in reality. Let's get, it, let's get innocuous with uh, what our job is, so nobody will have any suspicions. Yeah, he's a Chinese spy on loan to the USA's CIA. So the opening scene in this movie shows Bob Ho in action, and he's very skilled at the martial arts, and he has a lot of spy gadgets, too. Yeah, so, he's he's good with the gadgets. I love that. Yeah, so they're at this dinner at a nice restaurant, and Bob gets a call, and he's got to leave. And it's the CIA requesting his help immediately. So he must leave before telling Jillian what he really does. That's what he wanted to he was to in the middle her. of getting ready yeah. to tell her what he does. Because they, they have this relationship, and he wanted to tell her before they got any further in the relationship, hey, you know, I'm really kind of a spy, not a pen salesman. So he shows up at what looks like an elegant pen shop with pens on display on lighted shelves. It looks great. And he inserts his pen into one of the holders <laughs> and the shelf unit rises and he enters a CIA monitoring room. Very cool. They yeah, flip. that is really neat how it just, 
you always think about the okay you you pull the book off the bookshelf or whatever yeah, yeah. here you just put the pen in the holder and boom it opens up yeah they flip a few units to reveal shelves of high-tech gadgets and bob takes what he thinks he needs for this mission that he's about to embark on now these shelving units hiding the gadgets and seek and the secret entrance and displays of pens etc it really kind of foreshadows the gadget room in kingsman which won't be released until 2014. So yeah, or or in the uh, 2019 wonderful film Charlie's Angels. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Charlie's Angels, which definitely got that from Kingsman, or maybe they got it from here, from the spy next door. That, that's possible. But I really love how the character Bob and and Colton, who's played by Billy Ray Cyrus, just grab the stuff off the shelves they want. The shelves are sitting there; they just start grabbing stuff. Yeah, yeah, not exactly like, like cues. Saying, hey, you bring this stuff back, bond in good condition. Pay attention, 007. Yeah, just yeah. grab what you need. <laughs> yeah. So Bob's on this mission to find this Russian agent who is up to no good, of course. He does a variety of missions, ends up having to babysit for Jillian's kids for several days as her dad must have hip surgery out of town. And one of the kids downloads a file from Bob Ho's well, computer. Actually, the, the, pr the premise on that, though, is not just that he has to babysit these kids. The kids don't like him. The kids don't like Bob Ho. They, and now he's going to babysit think, for him for days. Yeah, because we said he <laughs> thinks he's a nerd and everything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so one of the kids downloads a file from Bob Ho's computer that he thinks is a rock concert file. But it really contains a file intercepted by the CIA from the Russian spies, which has the formula for some liquid agent that when activated on oil will turn the oil into powder. So the Russians... Yeah, some bacteria thing that eats yeah, up the oil. Right, it eats up the oil. And so the, the, the Russians plan to control the oil supplies in the world with this agent. So the rest of the film is the Russians... Wait, another group of people trying to control the oil supply? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> this is kind of cool. The rest of the film is, of course, the Russian agents trying to track down the file, and then they want to kill all those who know about it. And in the meantime, Jillian is out of town. The kids are now at risk because the Russians traced the, the download to Bob Ho's house, who the Russians know now is a Chinese agent working for the CIA, kind of like everyone knows who Bond is. <laughs> yeah, they know who he is too. And now the fun begins. There's also a mole on the CIA team that must be discovered, and we see how Ho tries to protect the children from the Russians. So there you go. No, a mole in a spy movie. Yeah, no, go that's, figure. That's unique. Yeah, go figure that. <laughs> so after a lot of comical scenes and very tough fighting scenes, things seem to work out. The movie yeah, is. So I, I want to go. I want to go back on the fighting scenes again because we we mentioned that this is for the family. If you've got real little kids who might get a little freaked out with the martial arts stuff, there's not lots of blood or anything, but no, there's there's fighting. So we just pointed out it is PG, not not G. Yeah, the movie is a fun kid spy comedy movie, though, nonetheless. And it has some great choreographed martial arts scenes with lots of, again, very high-tech, cool spy gadgets. And yeah, there's one movie he does with a ladder that's pretty cool. Yeah, the underlying theme of the, of the kids not liking Bob Ho is there all the time, even though he might marry Jillian. And you see how they grow to like him and how Jillian finds out what he really does for a living. And of course, the Russians must be dealt with. So all this is the whole background of the movie. It's a fun movie and certainly entertaining with many comic relief scenes, great acting by everybody, including all the children who are just perfectly cast. And Jackie Chan, who, well, he's just a terrific guy, terrific fighter, a terrific martial arts guy. And he looks awesome, awesome in this movie. I think he kicked Bond's ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you mentioned the, the children and the acting there. The first scene where they really have emotion, I'm like, uh oh. But mm. then it got better after that. So it was like it, initially, I was like, oh boy, they're over they're overacting there. But they, they 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 tamed that really quickly. Yeah, no, I think they did a great job. So we recommend seeing this film with your family. It really is a lot of fun and action packed as well. Now we'll look at some scenes that remind us of where they may have borrowed a few ideas and in some cases, outright tell ya. <laughs> Within the first seven minutes or so of the movie, Bob Ho must scale this really tall fence, apparently at the Russian warehouse or a lab or something like that. His partner, Colton, 
is at the fence with him and he asks, how are you going to get in there? Jetpack? To which Ho replies, it's in the shop. This is an obvious reference to Thunderball where James Bond escapes that French villa after Jacques Bouvard's funeral. He leaves there via that jetpack. And there's also a jetpack kind of a thing in Never Say Never Again where same you see story. Bond <laughs> and Lighter on it. What'd you say? Yeah, it's the same story as Thunderball. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it's, the same, yeah, it's the exact same story, slightly different implementation of the jetpack, but a similar type of thing in both movies. Yeah. In a very short time, he gets over the fence. And now he's staring down at a grate he must get through, this big grate. It's a large, round grate with large, squared sections across it. And okay, so now I've got a question for you, Dan. Yeah. In spy movies, when you've got a metal object in front of you that you must get past it, what do you use? Well, I would say you need a hacksaw or maybe a laser. <laughs> yeah, a laser's probably going to be quieter. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he's looking down at this thing, and the camera angle you got to know this when you're, when you're watching it, is shot from below and looking up through the grate at Bob Ho. So if you're a James Bond fan, as we are, this is very reminiscent of Dr. No. When Absolutely. Professor, yeah, when Professor Dent is waiting for Dr. No in this large room, shot from below with a large round grate above. In The Spy Next Door, Bob Ho uses this multi-laser tool to cut through the grate instantly <laughs> so dan you know we love lasers and spy movies yep. and this one was pretty cool if if not a little ridiculously efficient he cuts through it amazingly quick and on very it. very neat <laughs> now we have a, on our youtube channel cracking the code of spy movies we have a video up there on the use of lasers in spy movies when we were putting this together we didn't catch that this was a laser in here so we didn't have that in our video now the Russians are in there, and they're holding a vial, and this key Russian guy, Anton Poldark, is there. A fight ensues, and Bob Ho uses his watch to guide him, and a belt he has, which I think is pretty cool, that he whips off and it turns into this metal rod. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a it's a regular belt, and he it kind of looks like a magician when they kind of make all of a sudden a uh, yeah, and it makes an appearance several wand. times in the in the yep. film and i it's fun every time he does it i think oh that's, that's pretty cool and so it turns into this this rad and his martial arts abilities are terrific and it gets the better of most of the russian spies but the head guy poldark he's got a chase now well you have to have chase scenes in spy movies yeah and this is a running chase scene which again this is our third point we'd like to make in terms of how this refers to other movies as Bob Ho is chasing Poldark, he's jumping, he's twirling, he's flipping over obstacle after obstacle, demonstrating skills in free running or parkour that was a big part of Bond's chase by foot in the beginning of the 2006 Casino Royale movie. As Bond is pursuing the villain played by Sebastian Foucan in Madagascar, now this Foucan guy is the guy who co-invented free running, which is basically interacting with various obstacles and the environment around you, which includes jumping, flipping, whatever it takes to quickly get around or through those obstacles. And here we see it again in 2010, four years later, in The Spy Next Door. Yeah, I will say the one in Bond was a little more intense, but this still was pretty cool. Definitely intense, the one in Bond, and longer. It was a longer action scene. This is a shorter scene, but <laughs> again... The same kind of thing. Of course, the Russian team gets captured as a result of Bob Ho's efforts. Good, yeah. good spy that he is. And the CIA team shows up and arrests them all. Nice. Ho wants to retire and get married. Hmm, we've heard that before. Yeah, so a spy who wants this, to retire. A spy who wants to retire. So this was going to be his last mission. He That's turns in his equipment and Glaze tells Ho, keep the watch, compliments of the CIA. Now, this guy, Glaze, is, is like uh, one of the big guys at the CIA. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the head guys there. Yeah. They don't really say what title, but no. he's, he's the boss, yeah. if, if you will. But he does tell so, him, hey, keep the watch, guy. Keep the watch. And this is going to be really important later on. But during the transport of the prisoner, Poldark, his team hits the transport van, and Poldark gets away. <laughs> Wait a minute. His team hits the... Wait a minute. Transport van. 
Right, Bond fans, think for a moment. What Bond movie have we seen the same thing where they're po- they're in a caravan driving off with the villain and the transport van that the villain is in gets hit so they can have him escape. Mm. Sounds pretty familiar to me. Let's think back to 1989 and Timothy Dalton in License to Kill Yeah, when Fran Sanchez escapes during the transport on a seven-mile bridge in the Florida Keys. In License to Kill, an FDA agent, Killifer, takes a bribe and sets this all up. Now, you don't have the vehicle crashing into the water off the bridge like you do in license to kill. No, but the concept absolutely holds that this, this, to me, this appears to be a takeoff on that. Yeah. And in the spy next door, someone says it, this looks like a setup and we find out later it was. So it was the same kind of thing. Killer for taking a bribe and getting paid off to get the friends, uh, Sanchez released. And now something going on here. Same kind of thing. Pol- Poldark ends up escaping and returns to the that warehouse lab building, and they show us the test of that liquid we talked about that dries up or the bacteria that turns the oil into powder. Yeah. Colton tells Ho that Poldark has escaped, very much like Bond finds out at the airport in Key West that Sanchez had escaped. So now what? Yeah. There's a funny scene in there, too, where the the – the female Russian spy is standing in the oil and her shoes end up getting wiped out too. And there's a couple of funny lines there. It's, it's, it's cute. So Bob Ho is retired and Ho says that to Colton, but Colton wants Ho to look at an important file that the CIA has intercepted from the Russians and Ho agrees and he sends it to Ho's home computer. And he tells Ho... High security, that is. Yeah. Although (laughs) his home computer is pretty sophisticated. Although later we see a little kid, Ian, can get in there. And and he tells Ho here that there might be a mole at the agency. Okay. We haven't heard this kind of concept before, have we? In any kind of spy movie? Let's think about 1996 and Mission Impossible. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Let's call it Mission Impossible 1, the first Mission Impossible movie. Yeah, yeah. And others... So anyway, Ho has this pretty sophisticated home system at at home for his computer. And he was about to download the file. But Jillian, who's his next door neighbor, she shows up with the kids informing Ho that she must leave for a few days because of her father who needs surgery. And he, he, Ho, agrees to watch the kids. Now, remember, the kids don't like this guy. (laughs) Yeah, this this could be a very interesting couple days. Yeah, so... He packs up his stuff from his house, Ho does. And in the right mean- next door. Yeah, right next door. In the meantime, Ian, the young son, downloads the file to his iPod, thinking that Stockholm.gbh was some super hard to find rock concert file. And so he's downloading it to his iPod because he wants to be cool at school because he they, they think this kid's a nerd at school too because he's really this bright, smart kid and and so on. But he says, I can't even throw a basketball. He's not a, a kid like a regular kid. He's just this really bright kid. So he wants to get this file so that he could impress the kids at school. Meantime, Farron, the older daughter, pokes around Ho's closet and <laughs> looks at his clothes in the closet. I love this. There's a few really fun lines in there. She looks at his clothes hanging in the closet and says, fashion Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Bob, Bob Ho does not dress the most stylish. He's fairly, no. fairly conservative. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, the, the Russians are tracing where this download took place. And okay, well, let me key. let me interrupt you here. So, a couple things. Yeah. One, one is the Russians are tracing where the download took place. If Bob Ho was really this really top end spy. Could this kid in less than five seconds have gotten to that file? Also, was he downloading the file from the computer or had it not been downloaded onto the computer yet? I, was un- I wasn't I was sure about that because I'm looking at that thinking, okay, how do the Russians know it's on the iPod, not yeah. on the computer? They, 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 did, thought, they did know they it, was, it was downloaded to an external device. But yeah. now the guy... But they didn't Colton. apparently know that it was no, also the Col- on the... Colton told, oh, told Ho, hey, I have sent it to your home computer already. Now, but he didn't download it yet, apparently. 
Oh, he didn't retrieve it. And so this kid, who's a bright kid, got in there and did it. But oh, Tom's okay. a technical guy, and he's wondering about the technical aspects of how you could do this. <laughs> All right. Now, and the, that's what we're other, talking about. <laughs> the, the, the other thing in, in, in this in this uh, one that we're talking about here, about the mole and everything, oh, and you started this part of the discussion talking about the fact that he's retired and yeah. Colton still wants him to do some work. Have we ever seen a spy retired in a movie ever? Well, not yet, because they haven't released it, right? Well, <laughs> well actually, we uh, Bond's retired times. quite a few yeah. times, hasn't he? Yeah, he, he has, and in no time to die. He's hopefully, retired, theoretically. Hopefully it will come out soon. Yeah. He's retired, and they pull him back in. Yeah, just when he thought he was out. <laughs> just when he thought he was out, they pulled him back in. And also, if you think about Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, George Smiley was retired, and they pulled him back in to try to find a mole. Yeah. So uh, some similarities here with the yeah, Casino these. Royale. He was retired, sending in his retirement, uh, license to kill. I give you my resignation. This is not a country club, 007. <laughs> remember that? I mean, it's I happened that. before. <laughs> yeah. So it's All it's right. back for this one. All right. So our next point that we want to elaborate slightly on is uh, Bob Ho is has got the little kid the four-year-old she doesn't go to school the other kids are at school and bob ho takes nora the four-year-old shopping for a halloween costume because it's halloween and and bob ho a spy from china didn't know exactly what halloween was he was asking me what's hollow yeah, what's this halloween, what halloween thing was. what is it anyway he goes to iraq to get the right size because she wants to be a princess and nora wanders off and when ho discovers she's missing Listen to this part of the movie when you're watching this. Music plays that is very much like the Bond theme song. Da, 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 da. That is playing there, and da, da, da. it immediately reminded me of the Bond music. So well, listen. Actually, I found a few examples throughout this movie where, especially during the action sequences, where the music really had some James Bond feel or maybe even a little more than the feel mm -hmm. to it and this one here is a pretty cool action scene the stunt they do with the escalator in this scene is actually pretty cool oh yeah that's it, it is cool it, that's a nice one so you'll enjoy that one when you're watching the, mo the movie the kids are slowly liking Bob more and more as he's spending time with them while the mom's away and to get better control of the kids, he wants to bug the house with locks and cameras and stuff, and he has his friend Colton deliver some things to him. Now, this is all going along, and he finds out that Farron's dad was married before, and her mom died, so she's really Jillian's stepdaughter. And at the house, Bob gives Ian, who is very a very, very bright kid with no normal kid skills, and he says that himself, he's giving Ian some fashion tips so he would look cooler at school and won't be considered a nerd. Now, Yeah, but this is Bob who the kids think is a nerd. Yeah. So he tells them to untuck his shirts. The girls will like it more that way. Muss up your hair, etc. Well, we remember the fashion Armageddon comment. And here Ian says to Bob, you know about fashion? And Bob says, no, but I know women. Okay. All right, Bond fans. Where did that come from? Ooh. We've mentioned the movie already today. Yeah, think for just a moment. Thunderball again. <laughs> when Bond arrives at Largo's home and he sees the rifle on the table next to the pool and Largo and he are talking, Bond says something like, it looks more like a woman's rifle. And Largo asks, do you know a lot about guns? Or something like that, he says. And Bond replies something like, no, but I know something about women. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Bang. Same, same, same thing. type. Same type of thing. Same thing. Uh, now you... Bob continues his fashion lesson for Ian, and he tells him to pull his shirt collar up to look cool, telling Ian he saw it in a movie. To which Ian <laughs> replies, "What octopusy? This isn't 1985." Yeah, I, I love that line. I don't That's remember an octopusy anyone pulling their collar up. Do you? I I was trying to think where in this movie is that, but. I'm not sure. Yeah, not I couldn't. Sure. I couldn't figure. I couldn't figure that out. But they do mention octopusy here, and mm -hmm. it's like okay, another little connection there. 
So while you have this tender moment between Bob and Ian, in Bob's house next door, the Russians are in there just tearing the place apart, oh, yeah. trying to find the device that has this file on it. They don't know it when they get there that it's Bob Ho's house, but they see through pictures and everything that yeah. it actually is Bob's house. And, of course, they know Bob Ho was a spy. <laughs> because yeah, right. they all know each other, right? Yeah. Paul, now, Paul Dark actually says to Tatiana, who's the female Russian spy, oh, I said uh, it would be bad if the Chinese or the CIA got this, but he's both. I love that line. That's a funny line, but he's both. Come on. He's both. Yeah. Now, and his face is good with it. He does a good job with his facial expressions when he says that line. Yeah. Uh, now, let's see. We have a Russian spy named Tatiana. That's unusual. Hmm. Maybe maybe that came from Russia with love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of connections here. Yes. Anyway, the Russians know the file was downloaded to an external device. Yeah. So they can't find the device. They can't find what, where the file is. Because it's not on, his, well, I, I don't know. It was on his computer. I don't know why it's not there now. But Well, that's what I was saying I didn't know. Yeah, he removed it maybe. I don't know. Anyway, they eventually see Bob next door at Jillian's house decorating for Halloween. And there's a fight, of course. And they attack him. But, of course, Bob is got some great skills with martial arts. And he gets away. And he gets the kids out of school. He pulls them out of school, and he goes to this Asian restaurant. Now, he's got the little kid with, with him, Nora, already. He goes to get the other kids to school. And they go to this Asian restaurant, and they meet this guy, this kid, Larry. He's a university kid who seems to have an interest in Farron. <laughs> oh, and I love <laughs> when Bob Ho turns to him and says, I have two words for you. 13. When he's telling him <laughs> she's only 13. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. And it is in short order, Bob figures out that this kid is a Russian agent too. And there's a fight in the restaurant that breaks out, of course, and Ho defeats him. And now wait a second. Now he, so he gets that this guy's a Russian agent. First, he looks at how he's cutting his food and eating. Hmm. Then he says something in Russian that Larry responds to in Russian. Yes. So giving giving himself away, like in Inglorious Bastards, when the guy holds up his three fingers wrong, saying, I want three glasses, he holds his fingers up wrong for the way a German would do it. Here, the kid was eating the way a Russian would eat, and then responds back in Russian. So Bob figures out that this watch that Glaze told him to keep compliments of the CIA is how they've actually been tracking Ho and where he is. So We told you that watch was going to be important later. Yeah. So here in the restaurant, he tells the kids that he's really a spy. And so Glaze shows up here before they leave the restaurant, and he wants the file. So now he's, he's basically revealing he's, he's the bad guy. Yeah, because how did, how, did how did Glaze know that Colton would have sent it to Bob? Bob wouldn't have told Glaze that. Right. So, so now you have this situation where he's getting paid off just like Killifer, and he kind of says that. In License to Kill, Killifer gets paid off, and here Glaze is getting paid off. And Ho finds out that Colton, who he kind of suspected for a little bit as maybe being the mole, it has nothing to do with this plot because Glaze confirms that for him. And, of course, Ho and the kids escape. And he, to not be able to track him anymore, he goes to the mountains and he hides. It kind of felt more like a desert. Yeah, it looked like a mountains. desert or mountain. And Some very remote place. And he's hiding the watch under a rock that's supposed to have metal or something in the rock, and that's going to interfere with them um, tracking the device and whatever. And so he brings the kids after that to a hotel to escape. And there's some funny lines that go on there with the kids and him. And you'll enjoy that part of the movie. At the hotel, he has a phone conversation with Jillian. Yeah. And the, his daughter tells Jillian that he's a spy, and Jillian's like, no way, no way, no way. So he actually ends up telling her that he is a spy and he's trying to protect the kids. And she's really angry and flies home immediately. Yeah. Now, you know, he's a spy. Would he be telling her over the phone he's a spy? I mean, phones are bugged and whatever. But anyway, they know he's a spy. Already, they know he's so a spy anyway, What's the difference, so. I guess? Anyway. Bob goes and he goes back to where the watch was. Amazing how he drives right up to where this rock is and gets the watch. 
and goes directly to that Russian warehouse or lab. Mm-hmm. They really got a lot out of that set, didn't they? <laughs> they did. They got a lot of use out of that. And then he sets the watch on a chair because he wants them to follow him there. So he's like, okay, here's where yeah, I am. Now he wants I'm, them to know where yeah. he is. Yeah. So while he does that, he sets up cameras and other stuff to be able to record what's going on once the villains come to where that watch is. Mm-hmm. He didn't realize when he started doing all of this, Ian had followed him because Ian had used one of the tracking devices yeah. that he found that Bob had. Yeah, he said, I slipped it in your pocket when I was hugging you. <laughs> yeah. okay. And then Larry shows up after ha- capturing Ferret. Yeah. So but two of the three kids are there. The Russians find out that Ian actually was the one who downloaded this to his iPod because he actually told them yeah. that he had done it. Not, not a, you talked about how smart the kid was. That might not have been his smartest moment. But then he said, I'm new at this. <laughs> I'm new at this. And there is a, there is a gr- this scene, there's a great choreographed fight that takes place. Some really clever stuff. There's some nice little stunts with the bicycle that Ian had ridden over. And then there ends up being a race to get to Jillian's house where the iPod is. Yeah. Now, of course, these guys are knocked out a little bit, and so they get a little head start, uh, Ho and the kids. And one of the things in that fight is seen is Tatiana says, oh, you've been a bad boy. She discovered all the equipment that he used to try to record this scene to catch the bad guys. Mm-hmm. And then Ian says, turns over to Bob Ho as they're driving, and he says that he recorded Glaze, the whole conversation. He recorded Glaze basically confessing he's getting paid off on his phone. It was beautiful. Yeah. And there's, there's also another scene in here that I really think belongs in any of these type of movies, especially James Bond. One of the bad guys says, Mr. Chich, because Glaze tells Bob Ho the whole plan. You know how the villain always spills his guts over, here's what we're doing, here's the plan, so you know the plan. Yeah, because they always think they're going to kill him, but they never do. But they never shoot him. I mean, they just have to shoot him, right? And they never do. And the one guy goes, Mr. Chit Chat just laid out the whole plan. We can't let him go. He's talking about the kid. Yeah. He'll tell. And again, they never just shoot him. Mm-hmm. And another part in here that I really liked is Bob has this he, this ring that he had shown Ian that had kind of like, it almost looked like a Dremel saw on it, yeah. a, ro- a, a rotating saw. And so he uses that to cut through the bindings when they had them tied down on the chair. A very Bondian feel for that one gadget and the yeah. way they used it. Yeah, and Bob, Bob had shown Ian this gadget at the hotel when they were there. He showed him the ring and he's oh, don't touch it. That's a sharp kind of saw. That's how Ian knew how to use it when Bob Ho gave it to him when they were tied up on the chairs and he's cutting the cutting the bindings with it. So it was pretty, it was a neat, a neat little scene. Nice little yeah, gadget. And again, a really good use of the gadget too. Yeah. So they get away, of course, and they get back to the house ahead of the Russians. It's Halloween. They blocked off the street in this neighborhood, nice neighborhood, and the kids are all out there, and there's all kinds of activities going on. But the Russians are now going to come after them. The Russians are going to come after them. Okay, can you avoid this little bit of nostalgia in this movie? Uh, Are we going to avoid this Russian thing that they're coming uh, no. no, now I get no. where you're going. Oh, Bob God. looks out the window <laughs> or, or the door and he says, the Russians are coming. <laughs> all right, all right. It's not repeated immediately, but we know the 1966 film, the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. I totally they, missed they that. They couldn't analogy. avoid this. That. Here, I, as soon as they looked out the window, I knew they're going to say something about the Russians coming. <laughs> And they did. <laughs> uh, it just went right over my head. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so they, they, they have this huge fight at the house. Yeah. And the kids are actually using Bob's gadgets. He goes to get the gadget case, and it's gone because Ian had grabbed it Ian grabbed and them hidden them all in his drawer. Colton shows up with the CIA, and all of them are arrested, including Glaze. Yeah. And just like you would expect in a movie like this, the kids end up loving Bob. Jillian loves Bob. Bob loves them all, and all yeah. is good. Yeah. At the wedding, Bob at the altar tells Jillian, I have one more thing to tell you. (laughs) That's cute. My name really isn't Bob. (laughs) And then he does 
a breaking of the fourth wall. The movie ends with uh, Bob, Jackie Chan's character, looking in an embrace with Jillian at the wedding, giving the camera and us an okay sign with his hand. Yeah. So let's see. We've seen the breaking of the fourth wall. Uh, we did a podcast on Q planes and yep. Major Hammond breaks the fourth wall there. And they do that here. And another thing they do in this, and I like it when they do it on comedies. I don't like it if they're if it's not a comedy. And this is definitely a comedy. Yeah. But they do show outtakes. Yeah. I, from, I thought it was fun at the end. Yeah. And so I actually, again, for comedies, I actually really enjoy it when they do that. It's like show the blooper reel a little bit. Yeah. And so that that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that was fun. It's like a, maybe a minute of it or so on at the end of it while the credits are rolling and whatever, and it's fun. It's it's There's some cool scenes in there. Okay, so now, Dan, what do you think? Because there were a lot of little quips and lines in this movie that were kind of humorous. So what was your favorite line? You know, there were there were some, some well-delivered lines and timely lines. I think one of the best lines of the movie is when the kids are eating breakfast. Now, remember, they have a pet cat, a pet turtle, and a pet pig. Oh, yeah, this scene's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know where I'm going. Right. I know right where you're going. When Nora, the little four-year-old kid, they're eating, she gives a piece of bacon to their pet pig. <laughs> and Farron <laughs> looks at that and says, that's just wrong. <laughs> and then they tell Nora and she's trying to get the bacon. It was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, was, so, that, was a, that was a cute line. Anyway. Yeah, now the the the, one, the line that I and again there were a bunch of little fun little lines in here is, but there's a scene where the principal is chastising Ian. Well, and he, he, Ian has a reputation for lying a lot. Yeah, yeah. And she 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 tells him he lies a lot. Yeah. And he says, "No, I don't." And she says, "You told everyone you spent New Year's Eve at the Playboy Mansion," <laughs> to which Ian <laughs> responded, "Hey, high def pay per view." I felt like I was there. <laughs> I just, yeah, that's a good one. And he delivers it perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we like this fun, comical spy movie that is perfect for kids and the whole family. Give it a watch. That wraps up our quick fire look at The Spy Next Door. If you haven't seen it yet, please do so and have some fun with your whole family. We're going to do a few more quick fires on different kinds of spy movies in the coming weeks. So keep an ear out for them. They're not going to all be comedies like this, but the quick fires are going to be on more obscure movies that you may not be familiar with, but they're going to be spy movies. So please subscribe to our Cracking the Code of Spy Movies podcast show through your favorite podcast app, whether it be Overcast or Spotify or iTunes or whatever. We're on there, so please go ahead and do that. We're everywhere. This has been Dan Silvestri. And Tom Pizzato. At SpyMovieNavigator.com and our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And please tell your friends about our show. Help us spread the word. Thanks. And stay safe and keep listening.